shift into a digital age mindset, building and maintaining deep trust relationships, forming and leading a virtual team and implementing your action plans. Join us at the PR Festival of District 102. Brought to you by the District 102 PR team. Right. Hi, everyone. Fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. A very good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to District 102 PR Festival. My name is Mahindran Krishnan and I will be the Sergeant at Arm for this session. Before we proceed with the next item in our agenda, allow me to read these important house rules for your kind attention. Please stay muted when you're not speaking and the Zoom master reserves the right to meet attendees when needed. Please keep your electronic devices on silent mode Avoid heating in front of webcam if your video is on. You are encouraged to switch on your video to engage or interact with the speaker. I also would like to read the video release constant for your reference. By attending this remote PR festival, part of District 102 online event, you agreed to the privacy policy of Toastmaster International, as well as the unassociated remote hosting services. Some of your personal information, such as name, image, and any shared messages may be shared with other meeting participants and will be recorded by Toastmasters International, who may use this recording in the future as it says fit. Your remote attendance hereby discharge Toastmasters International from all claims, demands, right, promises, damages, and liabilities arising out of or in connection with the use or distribution of said videos recording, including but not limited to any claims for invasion of privacy, appropriation of likeness or defamation. Thank you. With that, I would like to hand over the control to our organizing chair, who is our current area C2 director, Toastmaster Chloe Chow. But before that, let me give a short introduction about our session organizing chair. Toastmaster Chloe Chaw is a member of IGM Toastmaster Club since 2019, and she's well known as a little girl after her icebreaker speech. In her first year, she completed her pathways in dynamic leadership and served as club secretary. After that, she continued with Vice President Public Relations role for the next term and managed to bring global members to visit the club. This enables her to represent District 102 to be part of organizing team in global 24 hours table topic session. Now, we shall witness how this little girl transformed and let us give a round of applause to welcome our session organizing chair, Toastmasters Chloe Chow. Over to you, Chloe. Thank you, SAA Mahindran. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone here. Before I start my session, I would like to invite all of you to take out your phone and choose one photo to post in the social media. Oops. How about what to write? A long post, a short post, a creative post, a boring post. No one like my post. No one share my post. Oh my goodness. Welcome everyone to our fifth session. Sixth session, content creation session. I'm the sub-organizing chair of this event and I hope everyone you enjoy the session of this content creation with our speaker who is going to deliver very fruitful information and I believe that will impact you. And I hope after this session, I will see everyone posting a post of their photo with a good content in their social media and do tag us District 102 PR Fest so that we are engaged with it. And now, without further ado, 
I would like to use this chance to appreciate all my team members for their hard work. And now I would like to pass over to our Toastmaster of the day today. He is none other than the president of UT Asia Toastmaster Club. He is so dedicated that every day I receive his message to confirm with me what he needs to present. Now let us witness the show and run the session with our dedicated speaker today. Welcome Toastmaster Mick Te, Motivational Strategies Level 4, Motivational Strategy Level 4, Mick Te, the stage is yours. Thank you, Session OC Chloe. My name is Mick, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your Toastmaster of the day, evening, afternoon, or let's just stick to Toastmaster of the day for your session number six. Thank you for joining us today on Zoom. The response that we have received from the session have been massive and have been really overwhelming. And we, as the organizing team, is really extremely grateful for your support. Before we move further, let us capture some beautiful photo for this event. With that, I kindly ask for your cooperation to switch on your video and wear your prettiest smile as well as strike your best pose while our Sergeant at Arm and Zoom Master take your pretty photo and amazing photo. All right, everyone, you have five more seconds to switch on your cameras. Four, three, two, one. Smile and wave, boys and girls. One page is done. Next page. In three, two, one. Yep, and we are done. Thank you, Zoom Master Zinish. Now, for the benefit of everyone in attendance, the following is an overview of our agenda on the screen. Please take note that we will have a 15 minutes question and answer session at the end of the session. Hence, I would like to request you to put your questions in the chat box of Zoom or even in Facebook as we are live in Facebook. Our dedicated question master is going to facilitate the question and ask our speaker, Jared Peter, during the Q&A session. Of course, bear in mind, today we have a packed and wonderful agenda ahead of us we might not be able to answer all the questions that are being asked, but be assured, we will do our level best to answer most of the questions. So keep your question coming. Now, before we go into the meat of our session, before I invite our esteemed speaker, please note that what comes up now is the copyrighted material. No recording of any kind is permitted except for the official parties. With that, let us introduce our speaker of the session, Toastmaster, distinguished Toastmaster, Jared Peter. Before that, allow me to give a little bit of fun fact about Jared. Jared is a local homegrown Malaysian, and he is currently a Toastmaster member to Jinja Toastmaster Club, which is a Japan club in District 76. On the professional side, Gerard is currently the operations director at Pixel Post and Diran Berhad, a multiple award-winning TV commercial producing company. In Gerard's current role, he conceptualizes, directs, and oversees the production of commercial videos, just like how later on when he speech, he will be guiding us through his wonderful journey of his career. Prior to that, he also spent close to 25 years in total, and for the most part of his life, he has been dedicated himself for producing television commercials and held multiple key roles in different companies or even multinational advertising agency companies, just to name a few, such as being the head of audiovisual department in food, cone, and building, and also the head of audiovisual department in DDB International. On the educational side, Jared holds a Master of Business Administration in International Business from the University of East London. Professional career aside, Jared is currently the treasurer of Post-Production, Animation and Creative Content Association, short name as Postum, 
Malaysia. Looking into the corporate social responsibility side of things, Jared was the past president of Ruma Hope, a home for underprivileged children. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's put our most thunderous, amazing, wonderful, whatever you have virtually hand clap to our distinguished Toastmaster, Jared Peter, as our speaker. Over to you, Jared. The stage is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Toastmaster of the day. Before I start, let me just get my slides up. So uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's afternoon here in Malaysia. So good afternoon, uh, District Director uh, Srinivas and the PR team, which is amazing, who has been really a good support to me. Uh, so um, let me see. Okay, uh, thank you, Mick, for the background. But I'd also like to say that um, that most of my background has been in advertising. So I've what I'm going to share with you are some of the things that I've learned coming from an advertising background, some of the conventions that we use when you design concepts for commercials and TV ads and such things like that. So I'm gonna share with you some of the conventions and practices and principles that go behind creating content. These are by no means the only ways of doing it. So, uh, so please just give me a second. I, I just wanna get to the... I want to see the chat, which I'm not able to see now. Yeah, it's okay. We will help you to see the chat. No problem. Sorry? We will help you to see the chat. No problem. Okay. All right. So you would just tell me. Yeah, we will take okay. the call. So uh, before, what I would like you to do is look at the picture that I've put up here. And at the end, towards the middle of my, my talk, I'm going to ask you, what is it that you can, what, what is, this is actually an ad. This was a picture that was used in an ad. It looks like a fish, but what is it you think, what do you think it is? And think about what caption you can, you, you think it could come with. Yeah? Just have a look at it. And then later on, we'll see whether you're right or not. Now the evolution of content. Now for the intents and purposes of this talk, what I'm gonna say, the content is anything that we put in a message to create a, a, uh, an action, something that you put in any message, uh, communication message, so that an action can be, Elicit, elicit, elicited from your message. So that's the purpose of the content that I'm going to talk about now. Content, because today content can be so many different things, but for this message, uh, that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm not able to, sorry, okay. Now, um, cave drawings as a form of content, because cave drawings were about 50,000 years ago. So this was cavemen that put drawings on the walls and you could find that in Europe uh, 50,000 years ago, about 44,000 years ago, as well as in Indonesia. Then about 5,000 years ago, it evolved from cave drawings to hieroglyphics. So, so in the form of content, it was a message. It was something that people could uh, identify something. They could make something out of these. So about from 50,000 to 5,000, there was about 45,000 years later, you could, came up with hieroglyphics, which was something a communication message for the Egyptians. And then there was oral communication about 3,000 years ago. That was, you see here, it's supposed to be Plato now. Oral communication 3,000 years ago was not the way we speak now. What Plato did was he communicated, when he had an audience, he recited poetry most likely because it was easier to remember. A poem which followed the alphabet. So it was easy to remember. And that was what he did. And then about 400 years ago, so it took, another couple of thousand before Shakespeare came and he had plays which people went to and it became very sophisticated in this language that he used. So the as you see over the years, the sophistication improved and it takes shorter and shorter for the improvement. Then about hundred years ago, we had radio, which also transmitted a form of content. And then 60 years ago, we had black and white television and then we had color television. Until now, we have what we have, the World Wide Web, which started about 30 years ago which has changed the entire landscape, landscape of content until today. Now, what strikes you about the evolution of content? If I can see the chat, which I can't, if it comes up, maybe you can open up your mute, mute button and tell me what strikes you about the evolution of content from about 50,000 years ago until today. Can I, can I hear some? 
if you can unmute yourself and tell me something, please. What is it that strikes, strikes you about the evolution of content? I think the engagement, engagement level of the content itself, because I think over time, um, when things evolve, I think people would like to see more, let's say animated and more close to life kind of content itself. Absolutely, absolutely. That's absolutely right. It's the sophistication of content and the engagement. That's a very nice word, engagement that you use, which is, uh, and uh, engagement is something I'm gonna talk about later. And what's the difference between the content then and now? It's also, uh, I think it's a sophistication and maybe somebody else can unmute yourself and tell me what differences that you see between the content then and the content now. What are the stark differences? I think the okay. message is to a wider, wider, in the evolution, evolution. Maybe about five thousand years ago, it was a smaller, a smaller communicated. The message was sent to a smaller group of people. But sixty years ago, and then like now, the message, the content is spread out to a wider, wider crowd. That's that's absolutely correct. What you see is as we progress, the content is reaching a wider, wider audience at a faster pace as well, and it's getting more sophisticated. That means. For engagement, the word that was used by the, the person who volunteered just now, the engagement required, you need more engagement for people to see your content, right? You need to be more sophisticated, more daring, uh, more, it, it just needs to be, trigger something in you for you to engage with content. Before that, it was something uh, that was not as engaged. The other thing is the attention span has gone down. You know, you, today you cannot be sit, sitting down looking at a cave drawing, you can't anymore, you know, because you, you, you need to be engaged all the time. And that's because what's happening is we have uh, neurotransmitters in our head called dopamine, right? Which gives you a sort of a pleasure sensation every time you see content. And we, today, it takes more and more and more sophisticated content, more engagement, more daring, to get the dopamine to go. So people expect more from your content. And that's what I, one of the things I want to tell you is when we do content, you've got to understand people don't, they are bombarded with so much of engagement that it takes a lot more for you to get them to look at your content. Now, when, when I was growing up in the seventies, I was watching, we, there was Wayang Kulit on TV, which is in, in Malaysia, in the no Northern States, in Kedah and Kelantan. This was a form of entertainment. And in the 70s, this was broadcast on TV. Today, if they broadcast it on TV, I doubt anybody will watch because the content has become more sophisticated. People don't want to watch this sort of things. Also in the 80s, 90s, you could go to smaller towns in Malaysia and then we had this Chinese opera. Until about 80s and 90s, you still can find Chinese opera in smaller towns. I've seen it myself. But today, I doubt you can see all this because people expect more. They cannot be sitting down watching Chinese. They, they are... Uh, they are so used to engaging content that, you know, nowadays, they are, their taste has become more sophisticated. So it takes a lot more for the content. Look at the difference between the, the movies then and the movies now, right? We would hardly, many of us, especially the younger ones, would hardly go back and see these old movies because it doesn't, it, it, we probably find it very boring. It doesn't move us, you know. So, so the, the type of content has changed. Uh, it, it, you need to really shock the audience to get them to really want to see your content. Now, people are getting more addicted to dopamine and it takes more you know, to, to, for us to engage with the dopamine to get them to release the, for the audience to have a dopamine rush. So it takes more. And dopamine is the same thing as you would get when, you, uh, when any of us took heroin or cocaine. There's the same kind of rush. So that's what happens when we engage in content. And uh, it's the same thing that happens when you have the notification on your phone for WhatsApp. So it's very hard for us to focus on anything today because we have all these inter in, um, interrupting notifications that we want us to divert our attention to something else. So we have all this bombardment of media that is trying to get our attention. Now, because when we get a notification on WhatsApp or Facebook notification or something like that, what happens is the, we are expecting to get a dopamine rush. It's not that we have the dopamine rush when the notification comes, but it's the perception of a do, uh, dopamine rush when we see the content that comes to us. 
Now, the attention span has gone down from 12 seconds to 9 seconds, which apparently, by, from this research, it is even less than a goldfish uh, from 2,000 years to now. You know? So our attention span, especially for the younger people, the younger, the younger generation is getting lower and lower, and this is really going to be a problem. So there is a battle for attention, and whatever content we put out there, we have make sure that it has to cut across the clutter. Now, the jargon we use is cut across the clutter because there's so much clutter there, we have to cut across the clutter. Now, I'm going to give you a metaphor for the content that we use. If you, if you think of a content as a wrapping paper, right, we are bombarded with a lot of wrappers, a lot of pres presumably gifts. And uh, the, the, what the, the wrapper is what is going to make people want to whether they just decide whether they want to open up the box and see what's inside the content or not. So the wrapper has to be very attractive. And th there's a term that is also used. It's called one of the terms that you use is clickbait. So you have maybe a, uh, a, a, a notification that comes in your email or something like that. And some hopes that you will click the, the trigger so that it gives you a possible rush uh, that, that can trigger a dopamine rush. So, so the point I'm trying to make now in this, this session is that you have to make sure that whatever you put out there is able to cut through this clutter and get person to take the call to action. Now, in Toastmasters, particularly, one of the things that we could think of as a call to action would be to sign up as a member. There could be any, any number of things. The other thing could be to come up to a talk like this, right? To sign up for a talk like this. So that is a call to action. But let's take like sign up as a member as a call to action. That is what you want your audience to do. So then you would have to get some depth, some, someone to firstly, look at whatever content you put out there. So that has to be a promise of a dopamine rush for them to take a call to action. Yeah. So it has to have a trigger before they take a call to action. Now, earlier in the, when I started the, the, this, this talk, I showed you this picture. Now, this picture is actually, actually a, an ad that was used for a dish washing liquid. Yeah, this was a dishwashing liquid. Now, I'd like you to guess what, uh, what the caption said on this ad. Look at, the, look at the picture. It's for a dishwashing liquid, which you can see on the top right-hand corner. But what do you think the caption is? Yeah, you don't see your slide. We need you to share, re-share your slide because your slide is disappeared from our screen. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oops, or you need my Zoom master to assist you? No, I think I should be able to do it. Let me do the okay, chat. Yeah. Okay. So all along, you were not seeing the slide, is it? Uh, we see in the first part. After that, yeah, we stop at the last picture okay. of the illustration of this fish. Oops, okay. Okay, now it's good to go. Just need to press full screen. Okay, all right. Thank you, Jared. No problem, sorry about that. Full screen, yeah. Oh. Okay, can you see it now? Yes, we can. So this is a picture that you saw earlier. Now, uh, as I said, there is a, what caption do you think this is? What do you think the caption that goes with it? It's Greece. Clean and shine. Uh, that's, that's very close. Who said it's Greece? Sabaria, is it? I did. Okay. <laughs> oh, it is, but yeah, Jamila, that's a... Jamila, Devi. Jamila, very good. But it's something like that. Try again. It's close. It's close. Um, but what you see in the fish is, uh, yeah, it's Greece, but also it's supposedly supposed to look like it's very muscular. Yeah. So what could it say? Yeah. It's supposed to be... It's suppo it's meant to look very muscular. This monster. Sorry? Grease monster. Something like that. So what it says is fat no more. Now, what they're trying to say is if you use this dishwashing liquid, then any fat residue that you see in your dishes will be washed if you use this dishwashing liquid. Now, that is a very indirect message that you have. So you have the indirect message, which makes you want to think, and some of the direct message. One of the direct messages will be something like this. 
This is what you find in Malaysian ad, 100% berkesan menanggalkan hujat degil. So for those of you who are not, don't understand Malay, it means 100% effective in removing difficult uh, oil. Yeah. So this is what Glow uses, which is a direct. So in what circumstance would you use an indirect as opposed to a direct messaging? Just think about it. What circumstance do you think you would use indirect as opposed to a direct like this? Anyone? I see the chats, but I can't read it. I'm so sorry. I mean, I can see the notification of the chats. Can somebody tell me what the chat says? I think I think when you use like direct direct ads and direct posters, uh, it doesn't. It is like you don't stand out, and then people would not notice it. Uh, yep. But if it's too direct, it's like two people are just bombarded with too many things, like what you say just now. Yeah. Okay. That's that's a very good answer. But you, you may want to think of uh, using a direct direct uh, poster when you're competing with a lot of clubs. So if you are, if you want to stand your club against the others, like for instance, I mean, if you want to say my club does this and the other clubs, then you want to use a direct poster, right? But if nobody, people don't know about Toastmasters, then you want to do an indirect because you want to attract them to know about Toastmasters. So that maybe, I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but this could be one way of how you want to put your messaging, what kind of content you want to use. So it's whether somebody, every, whether people already are aware of Toastmasters, then you want to put an indirect because you want to draw them in and let them know about Toastmasters. A direct message can be used when you know you are maybe at a convention when people who come to your convention already know about Toastmasters. So you want to use a direct message to say, okay, my Toastmasters club has the most young people. And if you're young, you want to come to my club because you're going to be feel very comfortable. So that may be one way. It's not by, as I said, it's not the only way, but that may be a reason why you want to use, use direct and indirect message. Now, this is another direct message, which it says, uh, it's one, you remove the, the oil in one swipe. Earlier, it says 100% sun, and this one is one swipe. So this is actually what they call the value proposition. What value I can offer you as opposed to another club, you know, or another brand. So this one says one swipe, the other one actually uses, uh, can you see the slides? Yeah, yeah okay. you can, you can. Okay. So this one actually uses also, a, if you see the TV commercial for this, it also uses a mnemonic device to make you think about how easy it is to remove the oil. It shows you like you're tearing away if you, and it also goes with the sound. If you see the TV commercials, it also goes with the sound. That's part of the value proposition. It tells you that it's so easy that together with the sound and the picture that it's so easy to remove, it gives you the feeling that this is very easy to take away the stain. So this is the value proposition for Glow. And if you see for sunlight, it is one swipe. So that's how you want to differentiate. That's something you want to think about when you want to differentiate your club from the others. What value it is that differentiates your club from another club. Be very clear in how you can differentiate your club, you know, because in a in like dish, like dishwashing liquid, there's so many out there, right? So it's very important for them to make their what they how they stand out different from another brand. So it's something you want to think about, even in Toastmasters, how you differentiate. Here we have Dynamo, and it takes off 99% of germs. So this is another way of the value prop proposition. Now this is a big holding a plate. What do you think the caption is? What This is an indirect message, obviously, but what do you think they can use for a caption here? Anyone? Stay oily after washing. Yep. yep. You notice he's holding the plate very close to him. Very friendlier. Sorry? Very friendlier. Very friendly. Yeah. Okay, the caption was separate them. Oh, separate them. Separate them, yeah. So this, this was captioning you. So it's a very, very smart caption. Now, what do you think this is? What's the caption for this? Save leaves. Oh, this is also a dishwashing liquid. Save leaves. Save mm. leaves. <laughs> She's wearing plates, right? So, cups so, cups. So, clean. so clean that you can wear so, it. <laughs> yeah. Clean. Okay. This one is a bit hard because it was addressing a specific problem. 
Now, this is a Philippine, uh, this ad was put in the Philippines because at that time, uh, you know, even during when I was growing up, because I'm so old, when my mother used to wash uh, clothes, she used a bar soap that was yellow in color, orange in color, or kind of mustardy color, that was about one feet long. And what she did was she cut up the, the bar soap to wash the laundry. And, and the same bar soap that she used to wash the laundry was used to wash dishes. So this is the same problem that the Philippines is trying to educate the users of soap to change their, uh, the way they look at bar soap. So what the caption was is this, oops. still using laundry bars on your plate, you might as well wear them. So that was a caption. Yeah. It's, it's very smart. Sometimes it's so smart that it, that it may just pass you. So be careful of the kind of captions you use because sometimes it's too smart for the audience here. Now, value proposition. Now, uh, I just want to talk about a little bit about value proposition, how you differentiate your club. So the value proposition is how your club or whatever product you have or service differentiates from the others around you. So you may want to think about the pain point. What pain point does your presumed audience has, you know, think about it and what product or service you have. And then uh, what is the insight, you know, what insight can you offer, right? So you, you may want to use that formula, right? Uh, oops. Okay. So, okay, I'm going to talk about uh, something that my ex-president when I was a member of KL Advance. Now he had a value proposition for KL Advance and the value proposition he used was mentoring for corporate leaders. That's a value proposition he used, mentoring for corporate leaders. I'm gonna tell you how he came about this. Now the, he had pain points, he thought about the pain points. I thought it was a very smart move. He thought about the pain points, he thought about the experience of the club and he talked, thought about the, uh, uh, the insight, right? So the pain point was, Young leaders, we have a lot of young people in our club, right? Struggle with leadership positions because they, they when, when somebody goes into a leadership position, sometimes you don't know how to, to deal with people sometimes if they're especially older to you or even younger people. Leading people, managing people is one of the toughest things you can do. So you, you thought about it. Okay, this is a pain point. So what does KL Advance have? He has calculated that. He said he, over the... The people we have, we have 100 years of corporate experience. That means all the different people added together. We have over 100 years of corporate experience. And then he said, the insight was pathways. He said pathways has this very, very good programs, but people are using it wrongly. They don't really know how to, to leverage on pathways. So he said, with our expense, extensive corporate experience, we can take pathways and make it real in these young people's life. We can take pathways and teach these young people how you can use the, the, the leverage of pathways, the lessons in pathways that young leaders can actually use it in their, in their working spaces. So I, I thought that was a very good uh, value proposition that uh, Rajkumar had mentoring for corporate leaders, but he's no longer the president. The, the sad thing about, about Toastmasters is as president changes, maybe the new president may not have the same drive the same, uh, the same direction here. Now let's see what Uber has as its, uh, as its uh, value proposition. Now the value proposition for Uber was the smartest way to get around. And they had different messages to tell you how the smartest way to get around. One tap and your car can come, collect your car directly to you. Your driver knows exactly where to go. Payment is completely cashless. So these are the messages they use for a very single-minded single, single -minded value proposition. And it's, you have to be single-minded in what you do. If, you, if, you, if you're not sure, then you're not going to attract the kind of audience to your club. If you don't differentiate your club or whatever product or service you have from the others, then you, you may be, you no know, people don't know whether I can come to you or not. So your value proposition has to be quite, uh, quite focused. Yeah. Now, now I'm going to talk about the conversion funnel. When you're talking to an audience, when you put a message out there, right? There are different people out there, you know. Some people may be aware of those, your, your product or service. Some people may not be aware. Some people, they know about the thing, but they don't know how to, how to go about buying your product or service. And people, now some people have already bought your product or service, but how are you going to keep them using your product or service because there's so much out there, right? Especially in Toastmasters, so many choices out there, how do you keep them 
uh, with you. So, so you've got awareness, interest, decision, and maintenance. So this is something you want to think about. When you think about when you put your content, you know, whatever your content message out there, you want to think, am I trying to get awareness? You know, think about it. Am I, with, with this message that I'm putting out there, am I trying to get awareness? Or am, am I trying to get them interested to come to my particular club? Because these people are all already aware. Then how do I make them to make the decision? You know, is make the decision an easy process and how do I maintain? So I'm just gonna go through some of these ways you can do that, but it's by far not the only way. You can use, you can mix and match. I'm not saying that this is the way to do it, you can use mix, mix, mix and match, but you need to, when you're doing your message, to think about who is it you're targeting, whether it's somebody who needs to be aware, somebody who's already interested, somebody who convert the, them into making the decision and maintaining them. So one way you can do awareness is create curiosity. Now look at this, Dick isn't hard enough. Dick isn't hard enough. That creates curiosity. Right? People want to know. Now this is from a a cyber crime organization. And uh, if, if you can't read this, the, the, the caption there, it says, Dick is a 24th, 24th most common password in Sweden. See the full list and get a new one at SSF. So this, this ad is from someone who, uh, an organization that really thinks about the security for World Wide Web, but it attracts your attention. If you don't know them, then definitely it's going to make you read this, right? Now, another one here is, if you use a flamethrower to light the joint, you will be arrested in 17 states. This is for the US, but not for the flamethrower. And the caption below is this, the hypocrisy of American drug policy needs to end. So this is a group trying to tell you that, look, a flamethrower is a lot more dangerous than smoking a joint. I'm not saying that it's good to smoke a joint, but it's saying that it is not fair the way laws are drafted. So they're trying to change the laws, uh, basically. So this is, a, this is a group of people who want to change laws. So they, and uh, you know, these, these kind of things, you probably never heard of them. So they need to do something that will really stand out, get your attention so that you would read more. So you may want to do something like this for people who have not known, never heard of Toastmasters, for instance. Then if the, they're already interested, one way you could draw them to become a member of your club or something like that, is through an endorsement. This is one way of doing an endorsement. And this is from a Dublin Toastmasters Club. It says, I recently made my first speech. The support and feedback I got was amazing. So this is an endorsement or what it can also be called a testimonial ad. Somebody has come to your club, is done well, and he says, okay, man, this is, I'm going to testify that this is a great club. So testimonial could be something that you want to use when you're competing with other in your other people in your same category. Now, of course, this is a, it's a fictional ad. I did it myself. I don't think Tony Fernandez, for or those who don't know Tony Fernandez, is a very famous person in Malaysia. And he could say, so you could use uh, you could use uh, what they call key opinion leaders or people who are celebrities to do your ad, and that will really generate interest. If not for Toastmasters, I wouldn't be a leader. I am Tony Fernandez is saying that. Can you imagine, you know, if he said that? everybody will come to your club, right? Uh, now, after they have come to your club, say now they're interested in come to your club. Now, make it easy for them. Now, you could do a demo like this. Say the three steps to joining Toastmasters. Say, okay, call this person. Easiest one is to put the name or telephone number there that they call. Or say the three steps, you do this, do this, do this. So that would be a way of uh, telling them how easy it is to, to join Toastmasters. Demo ads are like this. Now, if you're selling, this is, demo ads are very, very powerful because if you do the demo right, yeah, people will buy a product. So this is, of course, it's for a super glue and it says it also sticks to handles. If it can stick a car to a poster like that, right, it definitely can stick to handles. So this is a demo ad. Another example of a demo ad is uh, John Trott Van Dam when he was telling you the, this, this is an ad for Volvo. If you saw the TV the commercial, uh, these two, Vehicles, these are trucks, were driven automatically using some sort of uh, automatic drive. And they were so precise that you could even balance both of them. And to say that they were the, the sophistication in the auto drive or auto speed or something like that is so good that he's willing to risk his life going on these trucks. So demo ad if done right is a very, very powerful way of getting people to change, to call them to, to take an action. 
Finally, after they have joined your club or after they have bought your product, how do you keep them there? Now people normally do corporate messages. Now, uh, what we have done, what KL Advance has done by the BPPR there is also highlight certain individuals. Now, this is not a KL Advance uh, ad, but this is something you can do. Highlight individuals so that they feel good. Everybody likes to see themselves on a poster. So you could put highlight individuals on a poster and say, okay, look at this person. This person has got this, uh, has got so much of background. This person has done this, done that, and that. And he's in his club, he's done his fifth speech or 10th speech, or you know, he's progressed very well. So these will make people feel good and they want to stick to your club. So this is one way of uh, maintaining your club members. Another way would be do festive ads, especially for Malaysia. We've got so many festivities, do festive ads. Now I'm going to show you the next one. It's something that our BPPR did for KL Advance. So you can see that they've highlighted a certain particular person and how much this person has contributed to clubs and, and what is his likes and dislikes here. So this is how you can maintain people in your club. Now, the, and also you could do funny ads. This was a ad for McDonald's. It says the real milkshake and you see, can see the cow on a trampoline. So they, you know, it, it tells you, uh, it, it's, it's a very arresting ad. It makes you want to see what it says. Okay. Another funny ad, this is uh, for pedigree, where the dog has got such bad breath that it kills the canary, I think it is the bird there. So you can also do very, very funny ads. Now, the, the third point I want to talk about is identifying your target audience. Many times we put out communication message and we don't know who we are talking to. We are trying to see who wants to read it, read it, lah, you know. But that's not the way you want to do it. Unless you, you have a specific person you're talking to in your communication message, nobody may want to see it. If like, for instance, if when I'm talking to maybe Sabaria or, or Srinivas, the tone and manner I use in my conversation will be different. If I'm talking to somebody else, a younger person, the tone and manner I'm going to use in my conversation will be different. So the tone and manner of your message should be to a specific audience. Try to think about who is it I'm talking to whenever you're doing your communication message. Think about this person you know, and think about whether this person is single, how much this person is earning, female, where she lives. So you can use this demographics and psychographic uh, um, values to then decide what kind of message I'm going, what kind of message my club or my product or my service is going to appeal to what kind of person. You may think of the age, the gender, the race, the location, employment status, personality, values, attitudes, interests, lifestyle. So these are the things you want to think about before you design uh, whatever message you put out there. Now, this is a, a, an ad and it says, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Who do you think? Firstly, I want to, I want to ask you, who do you think this is ad? It's a very famous brand. Can you unmute your mics because I can't read the chat. Sorry. The drug fellow. Sorry? The drug fellow who died. The drug fellow who died? Isn't it? Uh, I don't know the drug fellow who died. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know who the drug uh, fellow died. I, I, thought, I thought it's like Sense for Freedom or something like that. But who's the advertiser? It's a very famous brand. Um, Jared, I saw Abde, Muhammad Abde Rahman say Nike. That is correct. It is Nike. It is Nike. Now, I want you to have a look at the, the, the what are they, look at this. I, I don't know if this guy is famous guy. Sabaraya said he's somebody famous. I don't know. But what I want you to see is the image that it, when the guy is looking, firstly, it's black and white. So it's not color. It's black and white because they want to look into his eyes. They want you to see his eyes. They wanted to see this kind of the personality this guy has. Now, what kind of personality? Just looking at the photo, what do you think his personality is? It cannot, it doesn't have to be right or wrong, but think about what kind of personality would I want to identify with this guy? You know, this guy. Sorry. Determined. An okay. intense personality. In, yeah, intense and focused. Intense. Determined. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah. so this guy probably has an intense personality. He's a bit scruffy, you know. He so he's anti. I'm I'm generalizing here. You know, please don't judge me for that. You know, he he, he looks a bit scruffy. He's anti-establishment, perhaps. You know, he's like, you know, I I don't care. I'm just going to do what I want to do. You know, he's got attitude, like Basically, this guy's got attitude. So that's what I say. If you use Nike, you are you've got attitude. You're not going to go with the flow, man. You you are this kind of person. You're a person with attitude. So the picture can already tell you the kind of message they want. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. So you, your belief is so strong that you don't care about anything else. This is what you want to do. You know, that's together with the picture, it can make you feel something. So this is an emotional trigger. They're using the picture. They use certain words in there. Believe in something, even if it means now that the words that are, that are really going to stand out is is going to happen to you uh, unconsciously. It's like sacrificing everything. Yeah, man, you're going to feel. Yeah, man, I'm going to sacrifice even if I do this. You know, I'm going to sacrifice anything. I don't care. So it makes you feel like I'm going to do it. You know, so these are emotional triggers by using certain words like this. So some of the emotional triggers that you can use. So your ad will be good if you can evoke certain emotion. So in Toastmasters, you've got integrity, respect, service, and excellence, right? So you can use these emotional triggers. Now it's either you you in your message you can say that if you you come to Toastmasters, you are a person with integrity, or you can also say that Toastmasters is an organization with integrity. Don't try not to use all of them because then you you you, you don't have a, a specific message. So try to pick one and go with it. So you can use talk about credibility, how credible your product or service is. Say honesty. If you're an, you can honesty can be my product is an honest product. You know we don't bullshit. It's pure. If we don't use all these other things in here, you know, we are honest product. Or you can say if you are an honest person, you will use our product because we. This is what we stand for. You can talk about ownership. You can talk about the value justification. So these are words or, uh, it's you. You don't have to use these words, but the idea is that use an emotional trigger because emotion is how people make decisions. That's number one. If people don't make decisions because it's factual. People don't go for facts normally. I mean, if you put emotion with facts, of course, it's even better. But people make decisions based on the emotion yeah, more often than, than not. So you want to use emotional triggers. Now, when you put a, uh, a message out there, the caption has to be grabbing the reader's attention first. Yeah. So whatever it is, it, the, it doesn't have to be a caption. It could be a, even a picture. If you look at the Nike ad just now, it wasn't, there was no caption there. It was a picture that grabbed the reader's attention. So what you want is something there to first grab the reader's attention. Then your intent has to be in the fewest words as possible. What is it you want to say? What is my message? Grab the reader's attention message and then the call to action. What is it you want the the, the person to do after seeing your message. Now, grab your attention is very easy. Why do you? Why does the intent and message have to be in the fewest words as possible? Why do you think it has to be fewest? Why do you want to keep it as short as possible? Can uh, you guess? Retain the, retain the attention span. So it could be remembered. Yes, it can be remembered. Atten attention span. But the number one thing is people see a lot of words. You may put them off. You know, they don't want to read it because, um, you know, the, the dopamine rush is, you, your attention span is so, so, so short. If they see a long message, they will not want to read it. They, I mean, I'm, not, I'm, I'm generalizing here, but the chances of somebody seeing a message that is long is going to be something that they may not want to pursue. They may not want to go ahead with reading it because I see it's, it's just too long. I have no time. I've got... Nine seconds here. I know this is going to be too long. Now, there is a next ad I'm going to show you is something that was leveraging on people not wanting to read this. It says, by the time you read this, you'll be dead. Of course, the intention was not for the audience to read this. But what it's saying is, would you read something like this? Unlikely. You know? So the, the ad is saying, by the time you take to read this, you will be dead because the fire would have. This is a, an advertisement to make you aware that the fire, fire happens very fast. You've got no time to make decisions. So that was the intention to So the long, uh, the text that you find here, which is also called copy, the long copy that you find here is really trying to tell you that you have no time to read it. By the time you read this, 
fire would have burned your whole house, for instance. Yeah. So this was a specific to tell you that, you know, don't use uh, fire is very, fire burns very fast. But also I want to tell you, I'm using this ad to tell you that try not to make your, your text very long. Don't make it too cluttered because when you have a cluttered message, people, all the ads I've shown you just now was not cluttered at all. It's very single-minded, uh, very focused. If you use do something cluttered, people are not going to want to read it. Generally, generally, I'm talking about, especially the younger the audience is, the less chances are they want, want, wanting to read it. Now, this is something that is very, very single-minded and a short message and takes you to the point. Now, this is a delivery service for what I think is some alcoholic brew of some sort. Yeah, I think so. So they're saying that on top, they don't even have a caption. All they have on top is a telephone number. They say they, they, they aren't the winning numbers of a lottery, but it will bring happiness to you. I, I think it's a very strong ad. It, they aren't the winner numbers of lottery, but it will bring happiness to you. And then it has the brand at the end. So that's all. And the delivery there is very small because once you see the number there and they say winning numbers, you want to read what's at the end. And all it says is delivery. So it's very focused uh, and it's not cluttered. The message is, is, is uh, very simple and easy to understand. Now, finally, I want to tell you is whenever you do an ad, do not be offensive. And now, it's very easy to be offensive because uh, sometimes you think you're, sometimes in being smart, like some of the ads I showed you in front, uh, you may think that you're being smart, but sometimes it can be offensive to certain people. Um, I'm going to show you some ads now. Now, this ad was done in Malaysia. It says, Guinness Stout, Bike Untuk Anda. This was done in the 60s, I think, or 70s, something like that. Now, today, I think people may find this offensive, especially people who say that this is misleading advertisement. It says, Guinness Stout can never be good for you because it's bad for your health. Yeah. The other thing is also, I mean, I think, it, it's meant to show that these are Malays in the audience and you know Malays are not supposed to drink alcohol. So this can be very offensive. I'm just using it as this one as an illustration. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I, there's no other intention for using this. So be very careful because what can be not, what may not have offended people many years ago can be very offensive today, especially in a multi-racial racial country like Malaysia, it can be offensive. And that's why they use terms like, uh, Politically correct, yeah. So something like that. This was a recent ad that they did for Merdeka done by Sinar. I don't. Has anybody seen this ad? A TV commercial. This was done by Sinar. Sorry. Okay. Uh, if you all seen this ad, uh, it, the message was very good. The message was very good because uh, the message was that we are all labeled, all the different races in Malaysia have got a labeling. They are, they are stereotyped. Yeah. Uh, Indians are this way, uh, Malays are this way, Chinese are this way. We all stereotype this person, but we, we should see beyond the stereotype because if we teach our children to stereotype people, then then it's really not good. You know? So they had a short child being taught by the, first, the parents that you know, these are Indians are like that, Chinese are like that, Malays are like this. Uh, so this was pulled off the air very quickly and Sinar really apologized for being insensitive. Uh, so we just a reminder that, uh, that when we are doing ads, uh, be, be very sensitive because sometimes the message message may be very good and we are so happy that we're very smart you know and we have done something that is we are we are what we call in Malaysia shock scenario because we think they're very smart but it may be offensive to somebody else so just want to caution you on that so I just want to recap here uh, navigate the clutter because there's so much of clutter create a very definite value proposition to set you, set you apart from uh, other other clubs or other service product conversion funnel be very clear of who you're talking to and which part of the conversion funnel this person is. Set a target audience, the psychographics, the, uh, the demographics. Be very clear of who you're talking to. 
Use emotional triggers because emotion is what is going to get them to join you and don't be offensive. Now, the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a video and I hope uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the organizers can put the link, the YouTube link on the, the chat group because this is something I'm going to show you now. It may be lagging here. I'm going to play it for you. And after you see this, uh, you're going to be broken up into groups, uh, in, in rooms. And I want to think about, when you see this, I want to think about how advertising agencies go about deciding how they can sell their product. You know, what kind of thinking process they use. And when, even as you watch that, I want you to think about who the target audience is, who are they targeting this thing to, and what is the value proposition? Two questions you need to answer. Who is the target audience and what is the value proposition? I'm going to play the video now. While women buy milk for their families, they rarely reach for a glass themselves. In fact, women's milk consumption has never been lower, and the category has been in a steady decline. But women are drinking lattes, a lot of lattes. Coffee houses, sea stores, and QSRs sell millions every morning. Latte lovers think of it as their favorite coffee drink. Think again. A latte is only one part coffee and two parts milk. In fact, retail coffee chains are selling more milk than coffee. So we decided to milk the opportunity and help consumers to rethink their lattes with an innovative yet simple strategy. Show women how easy it is to make a latte at home. You don't need fancy machines and special beans. All you need is milk, coffee, a little heat, and a lot of love. Milk and coffee were made for each other. And feeling their love at home is easier than you think. Brew the beans however you want. Just make them strong. Heat the milk any way you choose. The stove works, so does the microwave. Whisk the hot milk for foam to get the complete latte experience. <laughs> Pour two parts of milk over one part coffee into your favorite mug. Take a moment, sit in a comfy chair, and enjoy milk's nine essential nutrients in your homemade latte. At the center of the Latte Love campaign is the delightful story of Milk and Coffee's Dini Romance. Channel relevant messaging across 13,000 retail locations created high awareness of your campaign. Cross category point of sale merchandising elements stimulated trial by sending shoppers from the coffee aisle to the dairy case. In store activation pieces featured an easy three step recipe for making a latte at home and drove consumers to the Latte Love Facebook app where they discovered more latte recipes and ideas. The code allowed shoppers to immediately access the how-to video content in-store via their mobile device, and a mobile call to action gave them an opportunity to instantly enter for a chance to win an exclusive kit filled with everything they need to experience the latte love in their own kitchen. And there were a lot of winners, one winner every hour for 30 days. more contemporary and relevant by giving women a new use education. Latte love at home. Okay, can we do a quick update now? Ten minutes. Sure, we lost. Sorry? Yeah, you may continue. Okay, uh, are we going to breakout rooms now? Okay, I'll be opening yeah. the breakout rooms now. Uh, see you guys yeah. in... Uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Yep. Go All right. Thank you. Uh, can I have the questions again? The first one is, what? Is, who is the target audience? The second one, please. Uh, second one is what? Can't remember. This doesn't matter. You just um, value proposition. What is the value proposition? Okay. But whatever you whatever you can take take out from it, just just tell me later. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Opening the rooms in three, two, one.
this week. Thank you, David, you may. All right. So all of them are back from their breakout rooms? Yeah, most of them are back. Okay, I think we'll start so that because we've got very little time. Yeah, yeah you can start. Can anybody just unmute yourself and tell me what is, who do you think the target audience is first and what is the value proposition? And if there's anything else that you've noticed uh, that you want to, uh, to bring up. Anybody? Can I say and, something? Yeah, here. Hi. Hi. The target, uh, target group. Uh, Sorry? Sorry? Jack. Can I? Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, I'm Shiva. Yeah. Okay, the target group is uh, Latte Lover. Okay, that's one target. Second is uh, the proposition is easy to make, uh, nutritious, cheaper. These are a few things. Okay, uh, the, the value proposition is it should be single, right? Oh, single. It be, yeah. But it's, 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 uh, it's very good. Thank you for, uh, for answering okay. because, yes, you're right. All those things you said are mentioned are right. Yeah. So, any, anybody else? Hi, Jack here. Just now I was in room six. Hi, Jack. Hi. Okay, so for what we have discussed previously in room six, uh, we think that the demographics were for the women or probably housewife who loves coffee and prefer a milky type coffee. Milky type of coffee? Yep. Uh, milky good. type coffee, yes. The right. Very coffee good, type. very good. There's no right or wrong, so I'm not going to say whether you're right or wrong because okay. it's all uh, up. So as, as for values, they, they want it for... The, the company promotes it for convenience for those who work from home, okay, and provide a budget-friendly option, healthier option, uh, boost cow's milk's uh, consumption, okay, uh, they provide a guide to, to, to link with the uh, customers through their, through their guides, and also uh, this is an ad for a time before uh, Food Panda and those delivery guys uh, take over. That's very good. So that's, okay, yeah. that's all from my team. Thank you very much. So in the interest of time, I'm not going to ask anybody else, but I, I just want to ask this question. Besides the value proposition, and uh, Jack is right, it's the women that they were targeting too. And I mean, many of you have got that correct. And the value proposition uh, could be different for different people. But is anything that you want to particularly picked up from the ad? Anything that you think that you want to bring up? Anything that you what was interesting that you've noticed? I found that the this Nancy from John Tan's group, oh, and I found that they repeated love Lati at home several times throughout the advertisement. I think yes. that would be it. And I big think. pink in color, I think they are targeting women in general. All right. Uh, sorry, what your name is? Name is again? Nancy. Nancy. N A N C Y. Uh, I think you were. That's very good, Nancy, because love is something that a lot of people did not pick up. But if you notice by the kind of music that they put, if, if you notice the music, what, what instrument was used? Can anybody tell me? There's only one instrument that was used in the whole, the whole ad. Accordion? Ah. Accordion, that's right. Accordion. And the color, the, the prominent color. Pink. Pink. Pink, pink was the prominent color. And uh, uh, that's what, that least the pink color, the accordion. Really? Gives you a kind of romantic feel, uh, right? Yeah, no. These are not things you pick up consciously, but this will be unconsciously, we will go into you and you will, will feel this this kind of feeling. That's that's what it's trying to do. The book is for men, yes. kind of lit, color. Yes. These yes. are very yes. so these are very unconscious things that you pick up from uh, watching something like that. The other thing I want to point out, maybe uh, if you did not notice this. They were not selling milk directly because it would be very hard for them to sell in a in a very uh, uh, a market that has got so much of milk products. So they were selling it yeah. indirectly. They were trying to tell you coffee. tell you that they were selling coffee, but in essence, they were selling you milk. So this is what I, I wanted to highlight in the in, in that particular video that I showed you. Now, if not, I think we can move on to the Q and A session because we are running a little short of time. I think. Please go ahead, uh, Q and A, if anybody has. All right. I mean, first of all, maybe I just uh, take over the stage from you, Jared. Thanks a lot for the session. Um, for for the for the interest of time, now we move straight into our question and answer session, which will be led by our our question master. So may I pass over the stage to leadership development level one, Felicia, to facilitate the question and answer. Over to you, Felicia. 
Thank you, Toastmaster Mick. Distinguished Toastmaster Jared Peter, we have a question from Distinguished Toastmaster Benijia. Benijia's question to you is, with sophistication of content these days, is there a place for simplicity to create impact? I repeat, with sophistication of content these days, is there a place for, simpli for simplicity to create impact? Thank you very much, Shabtani Chia, for the question. Now, in, if, if you're putting a message uh, when, I think basically what you want to try and do is make your message stand out. If everybody is putting complicated message and everybody is doing very sophisticated kind of messages, if you are simple, you're going to stand out. Yeah. So it really depends on, the, on what the level playing field is, what everybody else is doing. What you want to try and do is make your stand out. So in, a, in, a, in an environment where everything is complicated, if you make yours simple, yours will stand out. So I hope you have answered your question. Uh, can I have the next question? If... The next question we have is, this question comes from Toastmaster of the Day, Mick Ter. So the next question for you, distinguished Toastmaster Gerard Peter, is there any recommended words to use in crafting an interesting message? I repeat, is there any recommended words to use in crafting an interesting message? Crafting an interesting message, any recommended words? Um, it really, um, as I said throughout the talk, like, you have to know what message you want to say. What is it you want to, at the end of the day, what do you want the audience that you're putting the message to? Who are you talking to? So there are lots of considerations you may want to, to consider to before you put, so I cannot come up with one word because there's no, if everybody, if people had one word, then I don't need to do this talk, you know, I just tell you the one word and I can go off. There's no one word. It really depends on the emotion you're trying to elicit. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. Uh, there's a question here on the thing. Can you explain value proposition? Value proposition very simply is what, how you differentiate your value from somebody else's very simple way to answer your question. How are you, what value you have compared with every, everybody else in the same marketplace? So that's your value proposition. That's in the chat group. Uh, next question, back to you. The next question we have is from Distinguished Toastmaster KK. Distinguished Toastmaster Jared Peter. How to decide that how much content is too much information overload? I repeat, how to decide that too much content is information overload. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Um, if you, uh, how you decide is, if you, can you say it any, any simpler than you have already said it? So that's how you decide. If I can say this, if I take 10 words to say this, can I say it in five? Can I say it in four? Can I say it in three? Can I, two? if you can do it in less words, then go the shorter way. That's, that's the simple answer for that. I cannot tell you exactly how many words because there's no formula. But if you can use one word that explains something that two words normally you use, then use the one word. So that, that would be my answer for that. Do as with less words as possible. Our Explain. next question is, we have an interesting question from Elishka Cook. Elishka Cook is asking, and also from Aruba, Elisha Cook and Aruba is asking regarding blocks. When we are using blocks to convey certain content, how do we make it interesting? Using I repeat, when we are using blocks to content, to, to, when we are using blocks to display our content, how do we make it interesting? Uh, what are blocks? Sorry, blocks are those like B L O G S. Yeah, B L O G S. Bloggers, bloggers, bloggers. <laughs> uh, the question is if I'm using blocks. Yeah. How do we make the content more okay. interesting or to keep someone's interest? Okay, if you're a blogger, right, uh, I think you would have a ready stream of people who are consuming your blog. Right, who are reading whatever you write on the blog. So you, you know this is my audience because if they come to your blog, 
they know your kind of content you want to use. So now you know this is my audience, right? This is my audience. What, I'm, what is, you, you may want to think, this kind of audience that I have, what are they interested in? Then that's how you come up with whatever I'm going to say. How am I going to target this audience? Because this might, this, you know, the people who watch your blog, you often, you mean you, you cannot be targeting everybody out there. If you're a blogger who writes about food, for instance, then you know there's people who are reading my blog only cares about food. So I'm going to connect food with what I want to sell, for instance, you know. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it really depends on who, who is consuming a blog, blog for one and what is it you want your cons consumer, how you want to relate to your consumer so that they will buy the product or service that you're offering. I hope I've answered the question. I'm not sure whether I have, but yep. Thank you, distinguished Toastmaster, Jared Peter. For those of you that we are able to, un to answer the questions, apologies, because we are running out of time. Thank you for your, for your answer, Q and answer, and we hope to see you in the next session. Thank you. I'm sorry Thank for you. not being able to answer your question if I, yeah. Thank you, question master Felicia. Um, just to add on, right? I mean, I think, Jared, you can still answer the questions from the Zoom chat. I think since the questions are posted there and once again, apologizing for not able to answer all the questions. So, ladies and gentlemen, now it is my pleasure to pass over to the token appreciation session. So, may I now invite our district direct, district 102 director, distinguished Toastmaster Srinivas KM on the stage. And we have district District Program, District 102 Program Quality Director, um, Distinguished Toastmaster Teo Chun Ming, District 102 Club Growth Director, Distinguished Toastmaster Eric Lowe, District 102 Public Relation Manager, Ras Le Presentation Mastery Level 5, Rasmi Raghav, District, Administra District 102 Administration Manager, Effective Coaching Level 5, Fatima Af Af Afia. We will skip district finance manager because he's not in. Then last but not least, we have our immediate past district 102 director, distinguished Toastmaster Li Mengzi on the stage. To join us together, may I also invite main organizing chair, innovative planning level four, Timothy Tan. And lastly, can we have our session organizing chair, motivational strategy level four, Chloe on stage, as they will now hand over the certification of participation and also the opponent opposition to our distinguished speaker, those distinguished Toastmaster Jared Peter. Thank you very much. SA, SA on your call. Leave Chloe is missing. Yeah. Go ahead, Mahindran. Thank you, thank you. All right. Thank you, Sergeant and uh, Mahindran. And also thank you for we didn't smile. Yes. <laughs> we didn't know yes. when to smile. Let's Can take again. Can you Let's do take that again. Yes, please. One, two, three, smile. Okay, then. Okay. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gerard. Well, Gerard, sir. Thank, okay. you. thank you. Okay, thank you, Gerard, and all our senior district officers. And of course, also thank you for our surgeon at arm. So may I also request our main organizing chair and our session organizing chair, Timothy and Chloe, to remain on stage, while we now also give the token of appreciation to all the role players that have been working hard until now, until this moment that we keep the session runs smoothly. May I now invite our very handsome sergeant at arm, which invite us uh, in the session itself. So may I invite innovative planning level two, Mahin Juan on stage, where he welcome all our guests with his warm smile. And we have our question master, learn leadership development level one, Felicia, we, where she facilitates the question and answer session with our speaker. Zoom master engaging humor level two, Zinesh, where he handled all the behind the scene meeting setup such as breakout room. And we have timer, Toastmaster Natalie, where she plays as the Rolex of the day. And you see his, her background is always in different colors. So may we get together to take a quick photo, Sergeant at arm on your count. Okay. 
to the smile. Mahendran, you sit nicely and smile. I will capture this picture. Okay. Okay. okay at the count Thanks, of three, three, two, and one. Uh, just one second, Shri. Uh, yeah, please stop the chat for a moment. Yes, yes. Uh, again, three, two, and one. Jalal sir, look up. Yes, three, two, and one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rashmi. So once again, thank you all the role players. And now I should hand over to our main organizing chair, Timothy, while I sit back and relax. Over to you, Timothy. Thank you, Toastmaster Dandi. And our session has come to an end. So thank you a lot to all the session organizing chair and the role players, not forgetting the speaker themselves. So I would like to present this certificate to our session organizing chair, Chloe. Sajay Ang, please help us with the photo. Okay. One, two, three, smile. Okay. So I would like to uh, invite Chloe for her closing speech for this session. Over to you, Chloe. Thank you so much, Ms. Organizing Chair Timothy and the District 102 Public Relations team for giving us a chance to be presented and organize this wonderful event of PR Festival today. I would like to place all my sincere gratitude to my dedicated team players for always being alert and what is happening. And yeah, with that, I would like to hand over back to our main organizing chair, Timothy, for his address. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe. And now we'll have a short break for five minutes, a bio break. And we're back with the session on Facebook and LinkedIn. So don't go away, stay tuned for our next session. We will be brought to you by Distinguished Toastmaster Robert Ram and Toastmaster Bhavani. Stay tuned. See you in another five minutes.